been cutting hair for about seven years now. Uh, I've worked in shops all over the city, but I kind of really couldn't find my niche or where I felt like I really belonged. And I felt like if I didn't do it, someone would beat me to that. My name is Ryan Hardwick. I am one half the team, owner, owning team behind Black Cat Barbershop and one sixth of the power behind Black Cat Barbershop. Uh, my name is Patrick Corgan. I'm uh, owner proprietor here at uh, Black Cat Barbershop alongside with Ryan Hardwick, who's my co-owner. And uh, you can find us in Detroit Shoreway, best barbershop in Cleveland, baby. Ryan and I have always kind of been on the same page. There's never something that he'll bring up or I'll bring up that is like one of us is adamantly opposed to. We're kind of like the two-headed snake, if you will. Like, you know, we kind of think alike in that manner. He was like a bandmate, you know, like right off the rip. It was just like, we got along, we liked the same stuff. It was just meant to be, I guess, you know? Yeah, you know, we don't hate each other yet, so that's cool. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Did I even talk? I don't know if I, I even talked so, to you. I don't think so, man. There. I th think you were scoping me from the long range. Honestly, I, uh, <laughs> so I was working at a barbershop with like plans to help open another barbershop closer to the west side where I was living. I was trying to scope out new barbers and I just thought Pat had a cool vibe and that he seemed like someone I could kind of, kind of vibe with. So we, that's really it. It's been steady rolling for four years. We're like an odd couple. Yeah. I swiped right on him. I, you know, play music. Uh, I think Ryan and I are really, really similar in that sense. You know, we, we were both playing in bands forever, got to tour all over the country, got to do that whole thing. And, um, you know, when you get a little bit older, you gotta start making real money. And of course, there's not a lot of that in playing music, especially in a city like Cleveland, so. You know, when I was 24, 25, and eating peanut butter and jelly every day, and, you know, like showering with you know bottled water outside of vans like you know I never saw that that progression in my life I really didn't and I met my wife you know who's pretty influential in getting me to go to barber school we had my son and uh, and I'm still able to do that stuff I you know I still play in bands I'm still me I you know I'm the same kid 10 years ago just with a little more responsibility and I guess I wouldn't have it any other way I've lived like a thousand lives by now but uh, I'd like to think of a little more tame at this point in my life as a dad and a barber and a business owner. I mean, if that's not the American dream, I don't know what is. I mean, I own a house from barbering. You know, I get to travel the world from barbering. I collect tattoos all across the world. It's like, I never saw that, you know. I've been fortunate enough to travel a lot, you know. I've always seen these traditional barber shops just, you know, that look like tattoo shops covered with good art. And uh, that's so important to me and my wife, my family's life, just art in general that I, I knew I had to do that. It's just, you know, we kind of threw stuff at the wall, no pun intended, and just found out what worked, what didn't. This is the manifestation of Ryan and I working in barber shops for four plus years and, you know, realizing what works and what doesn't. It's our heart and soul and it's something that, you know, we envisioned every little aspect of. Everything that you see here is down to you know, the tile, to the ceiling, to intricate ideas that are the shop, are, are him and I. It, when we were building it, we're like, oh, he was like, oh, I want to do this. And I'm like, dude, that's awesome. And I'm like, hey, I want to do this. And he's like, dude, I was thinking the same thing. So there's never any kind of push and pull on it. It's always pretty, you know, cohesive. I'm hip to all things like old for some reason. And I think a lot of that kind of runs into barbering because it's such an old trade. And I think what we do here is kind of a little bit of a throwback to some of that. Our buddy Aaron, who goes by the moniker OK Pants, kind of helped us kind of, kind of mold that a little bit into a little bit more of a brand, which is something I think we always wanted from a barbershop was, was an identity. We just had our own vision of how we wanted things to be. Nine times out of 10, if you come here and you sit in one of our chairs, I would, I would bet money on you coming back. You know, there's so many good barbershops in Cleveland that it, it makes it tough to, you know, to find someone you really gel with. But I think what we do here is just so unique. And a lot of it too is, you know, the environment that we create. So, you know, we're sending people out the door with cool haircuts, but at the same time, you're kind of getting that whole, you know, the environment that's kind of, you know, we cut up, we have fun. We want people to be a part of all of that. 
you know, the banter back and forth and the tunes we have on and the inside jokes and uh, like, it's, it's just such a family vibe here, you know? It's, it's, it really is such a great place and it's just fun, you know? I mean, we really, I, I'd like to think that the shop, the way we run this shop and the way the shop looks, you can see and feel when you walk in here that, you know, we, we give a damn. Ryan and I have spent a lot of time in tattoo shops, obviously, so that, that to me was a little bit of an influence. You know, another part of it is like that classic 50s barber shop thing. And the rest, you know, is just all us, you know, just things that we find interesting or things that we think would look cool in a barber shop. And people seem to agree that it works. I was just determined immediately out of barber school to do something like this, just to open up a punk rock shop where I could feel at home, listen to the kind of music I want, tell jokes, hang out with my friends all day. It's, it's not that hard, but coming in and working with, you know, five different personalities, I think could be, could be a pretty stressful thing. Luckily, we don't have that here, you know? We're a true team. Like, everyone that we work with is just so great, spot on. I don't think a lot of barbershops have that, what we have here, and that's what makes it so unique, and just cutting, cutting all our buddies in the service industry and this neighborhood and all the businesses around here just back each other so hard. It's really a special thing. I've never seen that. Once we put the numbers together, once we put, you know, pen to paper, it was pretty obvious that we had something. It was just a matter of, you know, actually doing it, which of course is the hard part. <laughs> this space was a barbershop. Um, it was ran significantly different from what we do. I don't think these guys knew what they had. I mean, it's just such a goldmine location, you know, with downtown just this way and then Lakewood this way. I mean, you know, all the... The development is really coming to the middle and you know Ohio City's already doing their thing on 25th and with all the development in Lorraine like this was just the the melting pot or the epicenter of small business to me. I cut in that front chair I see people walking by that are going to Astoria or you know heading across the street to Tributary like oh there's a barber shop here that's so cool. That looks like a cool place you know next time they want to get a haircut they're like I'm gonna try that spot. It was so important to be here I think this is the greatest area of Cleveland. I really do, I'm not just saying that because we're here. I mean, I just, I love it down here. I spend most of my time down here, even if I'm not working, you know, my family goes to eat at the restaurants down the road and we'll go see shows or movies at the Capitol. I just, it has that bigger city vibe in our little tight-knit city. I like a lot. I have this like, this kind of like little mantra. It's like, I call it a boutique city because I feel like, you know, if you're in a place like LA or New York or Chicago, you're, it's like, shopping at a Walmart versus like, you know, going into a small business. And I think Cleveland really, really caters to small businesses because it's a city in which I think those who take pride in living in it really want to see unique and individual things succeed. I love this neighborhood. I mean, when I was going to barber school, I, I just lived, you know, a couple streets away and I saw this come up. I saw, you know, I saw it go from a bar and happy dog where there's shows to like, you know, all these great restaurants and these, you know, these tiny businesses around these independent businesses. I'd like to say that, or think that we do something that you can't really get, you know, in any other shops in the city. So, I mean, Cleveland's, Cleveland's only really helped me out, you know? I couldn't imagine being anywhere else and doing this. I always knew I was gonna open a shop. It was my, you know, my dream from the beginning. I went to barber school to open a shop, not to, you know, just be a barber. I always had the grand scheme in mind. You know, it's about getting in here and just making it happen. Like, I, I want to share this with as many people as I, as I can or we can. I mean, that's why we promote so heavy on all the social media pages and the stickers around town. I'm a terrorist with that kind of shit. I put them everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's the most proud I've ever been, you know, maybe other than being a father, but I'm very lucky to have a partner that feels the same way, and that's why I think the whole vibe of what we do here in Black Cat, it's just, it's so much bigger than that. We are who we are, and you know, I think people either get it or they don't. It seems to be working so far. Why was the, why was the crab so shelf? <laughs> <laughs> Because he was shellfish? <laughs> woo woo! Kid's gonna, this kid's gonna be something someday. <laughs> <laughs>